Hi, I'm Patu from Free Fincal, and in this video, I want to talk about my NPS investment uh, performance. I've been part of the NPS scheme uh, since uh, January 2006, and uh, uh, part of the market-linked NPS scheme for the last uh, nine and a half years or so. I'll explain what that means. So, uh, yesterday, Swarup had asked uh, uh, to talk about investment uh, options in the fixed income space for retirement. How to reduce the um, uh, when you when you reduce the equity allocation the fixed income allocation will increase how to handle that where to invest it and so on so i've talked about that in today's uh, article at free fincal the link is here you can have a look at that uh, if you still want to uh, me to make a video on this i think it's fairly clear what uh, uh, all the uh, um, different options and considerations have been uh, talked about there if you still want me to talk about it i will make a video on this uh, um, I thought about making the video today, but somehow I was a little bored to talk about it today. So fine. So let's move on. There are some considerations before I uh, tell you about my NPS performance. NPS is mandatory for me. This has got s uh, serious restrictions uh, because uh, you know if uh, I will show you how big my NPS portfolio is, not actual numbers, but how big in terms of allocation. Uh, because of this, it restricts me from, uh, you know, uh, uh, stopping. If I want to quit my employment and do something else or do nothing, I can't do it before 60. I have to wait until 60. Otherwise, this money will get locked away. I have to buy myself an annuity for 80% of the corpus um, if I quit before 60. And that will be just a shameful waste. See, people who are just using NPS for uh, just that 50% extra benefit, 50,000 extra benefit, uh, hopefully that will be a small amount and they will be investing elsewhere but for people like me who is which is mandatory and I'll show you how big uh, it is and uh, my, the, the kind of investment that that is made into it is very huge and therefore uh, I can't just uh, quit before 60 so it's got serious restrictions on if you're a corporate employee oops did I, okay it just got cut for a moment I hope it's, it's still recording so if you're a corporate employee uh, Please do not shift EPF to NPS. They are uh, bringing that option in. Never shift it. EPF is awesome. It will give you probably a little bit less uh, uh, returns, but maybe 1% return or so, but it will give you full liquidity. You can get that extra 1% elsewhere. Um, and it's full. you can take the full amount. There's no, and there's no mandatory annuity purchase. So do not uh, shift EPF to NPS. Like I said, if you are investing only for that extra 50,000 benefit, Hopefully you are investing elsewhere enough, uh, otherwise you are in trouble. Uh, and if NPS is the retirement product of choice for your employer, that is your employer also contributes, then my strong suggestion is, even otherwise, my strong suggestion is use NPS as a pure debt mutual fund and uh, with a mix of government bonds, G bonds and corporate bonds and use your invest in equity uh, elsewhere. So uh, let me just bring this a little bit down maybe here so i have been part of the uh, new pension scheme from 2006 onwards actually i was uh, i had an account from january to about uh, august 2006 uh, i mean maybe june 2006 in my previous employment that account got uh, frozen and i started a new account and i didn't bother to change it i started a new account in august 2006 onwards and my nps contributions were uh, not invested in the market they were not invested into the nps because the nps was not yet ready uh, so <laughs> uh, i was earning eight percent interest on all my mandatory investments and uh, this was done by my employer and uh, the nps tire one government uh, central government uh, mutual funds themselves were started only on first april 2008 and uh, uh, my money which was uh, you know uh, accumulating eight percent interest was actually put into the NPS scheme only from 8th March 2010 onwards. So this was all done by uh, the NPS and my employer and so on and so on. And from that time onwards, um, uh, there's probably one small change initially, but uh, after a couple of years, it has been the same. I have three pension funds in my portfolio, SBI, UTI and LIC, approximately the same uh, proportion is used. Uh, there was one change to this, they themselves did it, after that I did not do it. And out of this, only 15% is in stocks and the rest of it is, most of it is, will be in guilds, about 40% in guilds, 10% in state bonds, uh, about 30 to 40% in AAA rated PSU uh, 
bonds, some uh, infrastructure, corporate bonds, etc., etc., PFI bonds, whatever, and so on. It's an extraordinarily diversified portfolio. There will be like thousands of bonds in it. If you look at the portfolio uh, page of SBI, the central government page uh, itself runs for 10 pages. It, that's 10 pages long. That's many bonds are there. So it will be like 0 0.01%, 0 0.2, 0 0.02% kind of exposure and so on. And uh, NPS has also faced uh, credit uh, problems. There's a very small amount uh, of uh, NPA in residing inside the NPS, at least for SBI, uh, it is there, central government scheme. But it's extremely well diversified, so you don't need to worry too much about credit risk. Even if there is a credit risk, it will be like a minute fall. You won't even worry about it. In fact, the grids will be more uh, volatile and uh, worrisome than the uh, NPS uh, scheme for the government. So, uh, my suppose I suppose if you assume that I started my NPS investments with thousand rupees, then that's just for illustration. Uh, today, my NPS uh, investment has almost grown to nearly four thousand rupees. That is over nine point five years. Although it's not uni uniform, that is there are stepwise because there are pay commissions, there are DA hikes, uh, there is a promotion involved, two, there are two pay commissions and so on. Because of all that, the monthly investment today is. Has grown, and if you look at the growth using SEAGR, it is like 15.3 percent growth over 9.5 years. Uh, this is the growth in the monthly investment. This is not the return. I'm not talking about the product return. And this is the increase in the amount that that has been mandatorily deducted from my salary, and that is 15.3 percent uh, CAGR over this 9.5 years. That is huge. And uh, uh, that is the reason why I have an, I, I, uh, if I'm not careful, I will quickly have an asset allocation problem and uh, NPS will overtake my equity allocation. So I try to keep my, keep, uh, uh, I mean, keep that, uh, keep the different and higher, but let me show you. Sometimes it's a stream of thought. All right. So um, here comes the uh, returns. So I have made monthly contributions of uh, two NPS 125 times over all these years. The uh, In the last financial year, the XIRR was 10.97% and the since inception, that is since I started investing in the uh, NPS directly into the mutual fund, uh, the 8% before that is not counted. Since I started investing in NPS directly, the return has been 9.6%. Currently, uh, this is a little bit more or probably equal to my equity uh, investment returns. I find that amusing, but uh, I'm not going to change. Uh, although I must point out that this uh, journey has been incredibly risky and very volatile. For example, in July uh, 2013, when RBI increased rates by almost two percent overnight uh, to to you know to take care of the weak uh, rupee. Uh, my NPS CAGR went from or XIRR went from 11.56%, it plummeted down to 6% and then it started moving up again and so on. So it's an extremely volatile uh, journey. Uh, don't assume that it's nice bed of roses and so on. It is very, very risky. In fact, when uh, NPS actually learned a big lesson, when they looked at their funds, oh my God, guilds are so risky. We should, what happens if the, if the person is going to retire and this happens the month before retirement we should do something right and then they started only after seeing this they started uh, um, incorporating staggered investments that is staggered withdrawal sorry they, uh, you don't need to get everything out at 60 and buy an annuity you can do it over a period of years you have until 75 i think now uh, so they, they learned that lesson only after watching this and that's amusing because they are learning it at our expense so uh, that's that one final slide. Uh, so NPS is now 37% of my retirement portfolio. I have a little bit of PPF and 67% uh, of my uh, of it is uh, in equity. Uh, sorry, uh, the, I'm sorry about uh, uh, no, 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 let me say that again. 37% of my uh, retirement portfolio is NPS. Currently, my equity allocation is about 54 55% or so on. And if you take the NPS value alone, that value is 67% of my current equity portfolio and that's a big amount and uh, uh, so that and that's locked away there and I can't just touch it it's completely uh, I mean if I want to quit and do something else if I'm bored of my job and I just want to sit at home uh, I can't do it because then I'll have to annuitize 80% of that huge sum and that's not gonna that's just uh, unacceptable and that's the reason why I tell people 
to stay away from NPS, but they, nobody ever listens to me. Well, that's all right, except for people. Uh, the NPS has provided, uh, the NPS corpus has provided uh, the necessary stability to my portfolio. Uh, of course, it has its own risk, but and, uh, because of that risk, it's very, uh, uh, I have to make, I may have to make some changes before retirement because having so much of guilt before retirement may be risky. So that's a little, that's a bit of a uh, danger. Uh, and uh, if you look at this portfolio, that's not bad. The returns are not bad. And that is the reason why I say, Treat NPS like a pure debt fund. Have a mixture of government and corporate bonds, how much ever you are comfortable. The corporate debt, they will not go beyond the AA plus, I think. I mean, uh, yeah, so they will not take take on too much of risky debt, as far as I know. So it's all right, and there will be a diversified portfolio. You can take that chance. It's not going to affect you too much. The credit risk will not be a, so much of an issue. So you can have a 50-50 mixture of uh, guilds and corp or corporate bonds or whatever proportion you like. Have some kids don't have uh, don't say no to kids and um, and uh, manage your equity elsewhere so uh, NPS is mandatory for me uh, it has worked well but then it's I, I mean I have to wait until 60 at least to uh, uh, and my mandatory retirement is I mean my technical retirement is 65 I have to wait until that to, to, uh, you know, to enjoy its, uh, its fruits and uh, that will not be suitable for corporate employees so my suggestion is don't invest in NPS. I'm just sure. reporting this as a matter of fact and for government employees who are watching this do not change your asset allocation because just because you can leave it at that 15% equity that's just perfect it gives you just the kind of nice diversified portfolio you don't need to touch anything uh, for others you can just treat it as a pure debt fund if you like NPS and if you are investing in it for that extra 50,000 benefit or whatever so that's what I'm going to say in this video. I'll catch you again in another. Bye-bye.